Hello and welcome to the Columbia Daily Tribune's Courtside View Basketball Webcast. This is sports editor Joe Wall Jasper along with Tribune basketball beat writer Steve Walentic. Steve, two weeks ago when we held our first webcast, we were, I think, both a little bit dubious about Missouri's prospects this year without Lawrence Bowers. I think probably, I, speaking for myself at least, I thought this would be a, a tough year for them to even make the NCAA tournament. Well, they go to Kansas City, uh, dominate about as, as much as you can dominate two games, beating Notre Dame and Cal. Um, how much of your expectations for this team changed based on what you saw there? Uh, tremendously. I mean, and I was right with you. I, I thought this would be a team that struggled. Mm -hmm. to, certainly would be a bubble team, but uh, what can you say? Especially the, the game against Cal, who I, I, I really believe is going to be the toughest team they play in, in non-conference play. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a veteran team, a team with some talent, a team with a lot of size. And Missouri, like you said, dominated. Wins by 39 points. They held, held Cal, which came in shooting over 50% as a team, under 30 uh, Missouri shot near 60%. Um, Kim English and, and Marcus Denman were both really good in, in that game and uh, just a dominating performance. In that As was Steve Moore. As was Steve Moore, mm -hmm. gave, giving him big minutes uh, in mm -hmm. the first half, which, which were really key. Mm -hmm. and, and that's another question that we had about this team was, are they going to be able to get anything from those reserves up front? Mm -hmm. They got something in a game that mattered. and uh, So I think you, you definitely change your, your, your opinion of, of what they could be Going forward, on top of that, uh, you know, you look around the Big 12, and other than Baylor, who's playing really well right now, Kansas, who I think is really talented but really has some of the same depth issues mm -hmm. that Missouri has, and Texas A&M, which I think will be better uh, when Chris Middleton comes back from his injury, uh, the, the rest of the league looks really down. And I think even those first three teams, Missouri matches up pretty well with. Uh, so you got to say they're a contender in this league race, and I don't think that was something either of us would have believed uh, even two weeks ago. Yeah, I guess before I was maybe fixating a little too much on what they didn't have and how that was other teams were going to be able to exploit that. What we did see was how Missouri can exploit its quicker lineup. Uh, you know, against Notre Dame, that was one of the slower high major teams I've ever seen. So they really put it to them. You know, they they could get the best when they wanted. But then against Cal, which like you said, it is a top twenty-five team, a good team. It was kind of the same story. Not only on offense, but on defense, they just caused all kind of trouble um, with their quickness. And I guess maybe it's it's a little bit of a carryover from the Mike Anderson style, where they're still a very active defensive team. Mm -hmm. They still got very busy hands, but they were a little more sound defensively. They weren't giving up a ton of layups like they were when they were pressing half court or pressing full court. Now they're pushing it all back in the half court. So uh, at this point, at least, um, I've been very impressed with Missouri, much more than I would have anticipated. And a big part of that is Kim English. Um, Last year, really the last two years, uh, issues with shot selection or shot making at least. Um, took a lot of shots, didn't, didn't make a lot. This year, he's been fantastic, uh, shooting at 62%, I believe, um, passing up shots to pass the ball. Um, he's really been everything people have wanted Kim English to be all along. Um, do you think this is what we're going to see the whole senior year from Kim English, or are you... Still waiting to, to make sure this is something that's a long-term deal? I'm, I'm starting to think, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, on the one hand, you say it's it's only six games. But on the other hand, it's six games. Mm -hmm. And that's that's right at 20% of the regular season. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been the same guy for, for six straight games now. And um, the shot selection has been dramatically better. And you see that translate to shooting percentage that's mm -hmm. dramatically better. He, he's, he's shooting over 60% from the floor. He's shooting 62%. Or 62.5% from three-point range. Uh, he got on an unbelievable tear against Binghamton on Sunday and, and mm -hmm. in the first half made, I believe, six or seven threes. Um, and he, when, he, when he was taking them, you just expected them to go in because they were all in rhythm and mm -hmm. the form was good and, and, and most of them didn't really hit the net or anything but the net. Um, he, he has been a different player. This is a guy who it, for his career coming into this year was a 38% shooter from the floor and a 37% three-point shooter um you know he'd been turnover prone he he's he still had a few too many turnovers i think for for what he would like or what the coaching staff would like but uh he's he's set offset that with you know almost as many assists right now he's got i believe 12 assists and 14 turnovers you said passing up shots uh to mm. to give the ball to other people he made a play uh against notre dame where he jumped up and was going to take a three-point shot and then at the last second spotted Ricardo Ratliff open, dumped it down to him, and, and 
Ricardo gets a layup, those are plays that I'm not sure you'd see him make all the time uh, in the past. And so he, he really is, is doing everything that you would ask of him right now. He also took four charges, I believe, against Cal. Um, to this point, at least, we haven't really seen him exploited on the defensive end. And if he was exploited on the defensive end, it wouldn't really be his fault. He's playing way out of position. But we haven't seen it yet. I'm sure down the road there will be games where that does happen when you run into teams that have a legitimate center and a legitimate power forward that they're going to try to dump it down low. I mean, that will happen. But at this point, so far so good for him. Uh, overall, we've now had a chance to kind of see Frank Hayes' style, how it meshes with the players that Mike Anderson left behind. What's your impressions of how it's kind of melded together? Well, I think he's, he's done a really good job of letting them play to their strengths, uh, which means he's letting them play in transition mm-hmm. when they have the opportunities. Uh, they're a really good transition team. They've, they, that's something they've been groomed to be for, for mm-hmm. the last couple of years, and, and, and you see them when they get out and run, they're effective at doing it. Uh, and, and he's still incorporating that into into their attack. Uh, at the same time, when, when they don't have you know f- fast break opportunities, I, I think the structure that he's given them has helped. I think you're seeing them be a much more efficient team offensively uh, because they know where guys are going to be a little bit more and, and, and they have plays to fall back on. I, I think Phil Pressey is a guy who has, has gotten off to a good start, and I think he's a, a, a big beneficiary of the new style of play. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that Frank Haith puts the ball in his hands, he sets ball screens for him, uh, lets him be a little more creative than what Mike Anderson wanted mm-hmm. out of his point guard, and I, I think you're seeing results from that. Uh, I think defensively, he, he took what this team didn't do well, which was stop people in transition, mm-hmm. and they continued to do it last year and gave up an awful lot of layups, uh, getting beaten down the floor on, on the break. You know, this year they're, he's brought them back, their plan in a smaller space they're still active like you said and, and as we saw against Notre Dame and Cal they're, they're forcing a lot of turnovers uh, nearly 18 a game I believe mm-hmm. uh, they're stealing the ball about 10 times a game or almost 11 um, that's that's pretty good you know they're holding people to right now I, I think under 59 points a game which is second lowest in the Big 12 and uh, scoring at, at a ridiculous rate of nearly 86 points a game, which leads the conference. So mm-hmm. uh, what more can you say? I mean, there, everything seems to be clicking right now for them. Yeah, I think that point about the offensive system is probably a good one in that both Pressy and Dixon, I think, are pretty good with the ball in their hands. Under Anderson, he was more about move the ball by passing the ball and then move out the ball to get open. And not big on just pounding the ball onto the floor and dribbling it and setting screens for the guy with the ball. I think that maybe they're a little, you're right, they're a little better. Like, and if the defender wants to go behind the screen, they're good enough, they can shoot a three pointer. And if, they, if he doesn't, then they're quick enough to go by him. So I think that's been a pretty effective tool for them. Um, and then defensively, like you said, I think they're doing a better job of gambling a little, but not gambling so much that they're giving up easy baskets. So. And they're, they're guarding the rim. I mean, that's one thing that they really didn't do that well, but they're, they're not giving up layups very often. Yeah. And. You know, they're not going to shoot the way they shot in Kansas City very often. I don't think that it's very possible. We've seen the two best games they played, they're going to play all year. But they can still have a great year, even with that mm-hmm. being the case. Um, lastly, their next big test is going to be in New York City next week against Villanova. Um, just your thoughts on how they might react to that. It's another, they've got down with two neutral <laughs> court games, but they were in Kansas City where it was just very much a pro Missouri crowd. How do you think they're going to fare in a true neutral court setting? Or even maybe a little kind of the opposite reverse because Philly obviously is close to New York. Well, it'll be interesting to see what, how they adjust to the crowd and things like that. This is a veteran team. I mean, they're, you know, they've got a bunch of seniors. They've got a junior and, and Mike Dixon. Um, Pressy's played a lot. So, I mean, they're, they're used to mm-hmm. going on the road, being in, in that environment, stuff like that. Uh, as far as the, the matchup on the court, I, I think you know Villanova and Missouri look pretty similar just at first glance in that both play a four-guard lineup. Jay Wright's been doing it for, for years. Um, they both have a, a good post player right now. Uh, Ricardo Ratliff's been pretty efficient for Missouri. He's shooting over 70% mm-hmm. from the field. Uh, I think um, Muftau Yeru is, is Villanova's big guy, and he's he's been even more productive. He's averaging about 15 points and eight rebounds right now. Um, I think Missouri might have a few more weapons on the perimeter. Uh, I think their bench is maybe a little bit stronger with Dixon coming off the bench. He's averaging about 10 a game. So, uh, and, and Missouri's been a much more efficient team right now. They're shooting a much higher percentage, not turning it over as much. So I, I think those things favor Missouri. I don't know how we'll, we'll see them play the first time you know, away from home for real. Um, 
But I, I think Missouri looks like a team that, that should be able to win this game. Uh, Villanova's a team that's already lost twice to, to St. Louis University and, and, and then to Santa Clara out in Anaheim last week. So uh, th- they're certainly beatable. All right. Well, join us again next week. We'll talk about that game and then look forward to the rest of Missouri's December schedule.